All right, with Tamara Scott, and she is announcing her intentions to run for Iowa National Committee woman uh, for the Republican National Committee. Uh, Tamara, what led you to decide you'd like to, to run for this? Well, I actually wanted to run in 2008, and Kim Lehman announced publicly first, okay. and I just could not see causing division where there did not need to be division within the Republican Party. Kim and I have very similar values. And in fact, I have spoken with her about this, and she did feel that I could probably jump right in where she left off on some of the UN resolutions or the party resolutions that they've made mm -hmm. concerning the UN and the Obamacare and Agenda 21. And mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll look forward to that if I get the chance. Okay. Uh, what, what do you think would set you apart from maybe some of the other people that, uh, there's only been, I think, a couple people that announced intentions to run, but what would be some things that would, I guess, uh, differentiate you from other candidates? Yeah, and I don't know all the other candidates extremely well, mm -hmm. but uh, I can tell you that I feel with my work, not only with the party, uh, having run for office against the House Minority Leader in 2000, uh, get out the vote, 72-hour uh, director for the state party in 2002, uh, 2004 being the social conservative co-chair with Kitty Rayburg, okay. and 2006 recruiting Senate candidates uh, 2008 being an RNC delegate yeah. to the National Convention, and 2010 working on the judicial retention vote. Uh, I feel like I've, I've got a pretty good handle into the party mm -hmm. aspect of it. Also with my work as State Director for Concerned Women for America, I've been at the State House lobbying and it was actually able to help with a bill on trafficking there this session, mm -hmm. passing that for the, the best interest of our children here in Iowa. Sure. And also what my work on radio, having done radio since 1998, and TV a little bit the last couple of years, I have a pretty good handle on a lot of the public policy issues, the headlines that hit home mm -hmm. that we're dealing with as families, and um, also the state itself. Mm -hmm. In those positions for the state party, I've traveled back and forth. And Shane, I can tell you, these are groups of very individualized, um, strong-minded activists and volunteers. And they don't need us to come in and tell them mm -hmm. how to do or what their community needs. They know what their community needs and the climate is. Okay. But what they could use is us as a state party and as a Republican National Committee woman to come in and help uh, with them as far as networking, mm -hmm. resources, sure. guests, the, the folks that I have come in contact with on a national level through the radio show and the TV uh, show. I think I can help even bring them in for speakers if they need them or give them names and contacts on experts on, on positions and policies. So as far as the other people running, to get back to your question, sure. I, won't, I won't speak as to what their benefits may be or may not be, oh, but sure, I certainly. feel like I am well suited okay. and ready to handle this, this position. Okay. Certainly have a wide breadth of, a breadth of experience. You, you mentioned uh, Agenda 21. That's something I've heard a little bit about, but I would assume most of my readers probably, what's that? What's that? Yeah, and I would just tell your readers to go to Facebook and to Marsha Horace page in the Agenda 21. Uh, I was interviewing Tom DeWeese from American Policy Center clear back in 2005, 2006 on this issue. It's a very aggressive plan. Uh, people think it comes out of the UN, but what it does basically is restricts you and I as property owners. It takes away our rights. It takes away uh, the freedoms that we have, even in selling our properties and the zoning issues. And it's, it's sold as a uh, plan for, I think, development and sure. sustainable, uh, you know, planning. I would just caution, if anyone's not heard of that, I would caution them and ask them to go and find more information on it than what I can give them in this interview. But I have spoken with Marsha Hora, Hora who is actually um, pleased that I am running, and mm -hmm. so I'll look forward, and that's the difference, too. I won't, I won't tell you I have all the answers. Okay. But I will tell you I think I know the folks who can get the answers to us. Certainly. Uh, there's been a, a big deal made out of uh, our current National Committee man and National Committee, committee woman uh, supporting certain candidates or not supporting certain candidates. Would you, in, in the position National Committee woman, support all Republicans or would you be selective in, in who you support? Um, how would you approach that? Yeah, I think it's probably going to be similar to how we have our families. Okay. You want, you want your families to do well and inside the home, you steer and you hold accountable and you do those things that you can to help people move forward. But outside, mm -hmm. in the public, you do what you can to move the team forward okay. and to uphold those who are on your team. And so accountability, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we can hopefully work 
work together on those issues where we find we agree and move everyone down the hill towards the goal that our founding fathers set forth, our Constitution has brought forth, and that agrees with our natural law, mm -hmm. God's law. I hope that we can hold those values together as a party. That's what will separate us from the Democrats, and that's what will bring others to us. If you were to be elected um, as National Committee woman, what would be what what are some of your top three priorities of things that you'd want to accomplish in that role, and what would be some of your main concerns with the party as it is right now? Okay, the top three goals that I'd like to see: uh, first, in the nation caucus. Uh, I hear how much money it brings to Iowa. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, that's not my interest. I, it's great for Iowa, but mm -hmm. that's that's not my concern. My concern is the best process. Mm -hmm. It is quite a, a um, <clears throat> not just an honor, but a huge opportunity to vet these candidates. And I think Iowans have learned how to do that. We know what to expect. We want a handshake over a headline. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to talk and ask the questions. And for that to go anywhere else in this nation right now, when we're in such a perilous situation economically, um, even militarily with national defense and national security issues right here within our own borders, I think it would be dangerous to allow that to go anywhere else. And so I, I'm hopeful that I can get to the national level of the RNC and really work to keep Iowa first in the nation caucus. Okay. Uh, at, at the state level, yeah. I'd like to see us come together. Okay. Um, liberals learned a long time ago that they can agree on one thing and nothing else and make progress. Mm -hmm. We need to learn as conservatives, fiscal, social, Republicans, that if we agree on nothing else, but we can work together on one thing mm -hmm. for good, we need to move that ball forward. Okay. Uh, regarding the First in Nation uh, Caucus, um, do you believe that something that's frustrated me is how these other states keep pushing their primaries right. forward and nothing gets done about it? The, do, do there need to be some penalties with you know, some some rules with teeth actually applied <laughs> to keep them from doing that? Well, being that I'm a candidate for this position, I don't think I'm going to come in with the rules and regulations <laughs> right away, Shane. But it'd be something to look into. Here's the deal. This process becomes more elongated and more elongated. And what it does, it distracts us from what's really happening in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need to be vetting our presidential candidates, but not to the extent where Congress is uh, putting bills out that are dangerous to our freedoms and our liberties, and we're missing it because we're so wrapped up in the headlines and the festivities of a political campaign. Okay. Um, and some of your concerns, uh, any concerns as far as, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at what's happening at the state party level, and I'm seeing fundraising down. Their last fundraiser, the tennis, was pretty, you know, abysmal. I, I was, I was at, out of town that weekend, but I'd heard reports, and um, you have the state central committee now um, with a, a majority or almost a majority of, of Ron Paul supporters, which, you know, they are well organized. They, they did their job. Mm -hmm. um, the caucus, Iowa caucus process, and I know it's national, I don't know how much, I, I guess my ignorance is, I, I, I'm not entirely sure how influential national committee women would be in the caucus process. Um, uh, but I'm concerned about how, um, just the integrity of the process, how we've almost had three different winners. We've, you know, <laughs> Mitt Romney on, on caucus night and then Rick Santorum, and now it looks like Ron Paul's going to come away with all the delegates. Do you believe there needs to be rule changes to deal with that, or should we just keep it as is, or is that something, you know, that maybe this is just a one-time fluke thing? I mean, what do you, what do you think? I think first we go back and, and look through the Constitution for the state, the party uh, bylaws and make sure that we're on track. Uh, I would want to investigate it more before I can come sure. out and start saying what we need to do or don't do. You're right, the Ron Paul folks need to be congratulated. They mm -hmm. were very organized in getting several delegates to the state convention. For this position, it is not to be a presidential campaign spokesman. Mm -hmm. This is a spokesperson for the state of Iowa. And I think, again, that's what sets me apart Sure. from others in the race is um, actually you and I did an interview um, at one of the events at the Iowa Faith and mm -hmm. Freedom. It's on video somewhere online right yeah, now. Yeah, you had good things to say about everybody. About every candidate. Yeah.
because in our, as I say, in our, in our inner circles, we can hold each other accountable. But when the public's going to be there, why do we continue to give them fodder and ammunition to shoot back at us and at our own? Uh, and you'll have those purists out there. And again, I, I would invite all the folks listening to this and all the folks who are going to be part of this process, we need to be so careful. We, we've, we've been burned a couple of times, and so we're so guarded that we're ready to pick and nitpick and shoot. Mm -hmm. And if what someone says, one, per, one word, independently minded, we, 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 may, we may grapple with that. What do you mean by that? Or we need to start working together keeping our eyes focused on what we can accomplish rather than working out of fear of what someone may or may not mean by a certain word. Sure. Let's look at the heart. Let's look at the intent. I think my record speaks pretty well for itself as far as who I am and on conservative issues and who I am as far as working with the party. And this last session I mentioned the trafficking bill. I mm -hmm. was able to work with Gene Frazee, a Democrat out of the Senate. I don't know what Gene's policies are on anything else, but on one bill, one day, we can move it through in 24 hours past the funnel for Iowa's kids. Sure. Looking at the platform, you know, one thing, I'm as a social conservative, I'm concerned about certain, not, not obviously not everybody within the party, but certain figures within the party are wanting to not necessarily leave social conservative issues or social issues, but they're just kind of want. let's not focus on that. Let's just, let's, let's worry about the debt. Let's worry about getting our budget under control. What are your thoughts on that, that strategy? You will not have sound fiscal policy until you have sound social policy. Family Research Council in May of 2009 mm -hmm. said that it cost us, I believe, $280 billion a year in tax money for our fractured families. Now, that's not a judgment call. That's a, that's a fiscal report. Mm -hmm. When the family's hurting, society pays the cost. When the family's healthy, society benefits. That's not a social mandate. That's just honest uh, economics. Mm -hmm. And so I think, uh, again, that's one of my strengths possibly is that I am a social conservative who understands you better have a good economic plan when folks are hurting financially sure. and not sure if they can make rent or buy gas. You better have uh, job creation. You better have regulation, taxation policies mm -hmm. that will allow private industry to thrive once again, and we don't have that right now. Absolutely. So I think I think they all work together, and again, we start pitting each other against, mm -hmm. with those labels, we do ourselves damage. Yeah, that's, that's true. I, the maddening thing for me is, you know, I, I very rarely met a social conservative who wasn't also a fiscal conservative. Right. I mean, it's, it's a pretty rare thing. I know there are a few, are, a few people out there like that, but... Um, Anything else you think that you know our, my readers should know about uh, your candidacy and, and just about you as a person uh, that you think would help in the decision-making process? I'm hopeful that I'll be given this opportunity. Uh, as I said, it was something I looked at in 2008 and did want to cause division in the problem by adding my name in a ring where there were people with similar values. And I think this time around there are people with similar values, but we have differing strategies. Uh, I'm not willing to, to just say someone can't participate because they don't agree 100% with what I agree with. My goodness, if we all took that approach, I don't think many of us would be in a healthy marriage. <laughs> Very true. So I, I think hopefully that I can be the blend, okay. the balance, um, and bring this ball forward. I've, I've got the experience of media to be able, I hopefully, to handle myself. Uh, I have the experience statewide uh, dealing with different facets on public policy as well as political uh, parties and, and my hope is to be able to equip and empower those those private groups mm -hmm. those collections in the counties that have their individuality and should keep it but to be able to give them resources and networking and on the national level as I said the resolutions that um, Kim Lehman and Steve Scheffler have been able to to put forward whether it's agenda 21 whether it's keeping the US out of the UN mm -hmm. or the UN out of the US mm -hmm. Uh, Obamacare, the national vote, mm -hmm. uh, the national popular vote. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that, again, I was doing interviews on back in, I think, 2008. Okay. So uh, I'm not, certainly not an expert on any of it. Don't pretend to be. Sure. But I think I know and have the connections to get the help from the experts even more. 
from the private individuals that this country was founded upon. And I would encourage our listeners, we the people, mm-hmm. there's the power. Absolutely. And don't give it to anyone else. Uh, one last question. Um, it will, uh, if you were elected National Committee woman, would you weigh in and, and make any endorsement in any primary, contested primary, or would you just be like Switzerland, I'm going to remain neutral? That's a tough question. Okay. I need to, I need to hear from the RNC what their restrictions and regulations are. Okay. Uh, it's easy to sit back and say, what good is someone if they won't stand up for what they believe? And at the same time, those same people who say that mm-hmm. are very offended when people do stand up and don't agree mm-hmm. with the candidate of choice that they agree with. Sure. So if I am elected to this position, kid yourself not, Tamara Scott has an opinion <laughs> and will research candidates, but I will be very careful. Okay. And I would doubt that I would get involved in primaries okay. just because of what it could do, again, mm-hmm. to our party. I still think the Republican Party is the best party out there right now. Okay. Uh, our, our, our government books talk to us about the benefit of having a two-party mm-hmm. system. We may in time have a different two-party system if these parties don't behave mm-hmm. and keep with their platforms and the principles that the people have put forward. And I think that's the key, is that the people need to hold the candidates accountable. Absolutely. Well, Tamara, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.